But we will cover the legal news of the day sequentially, meaning we will begin with the 10 a.m. hearing in Washington, D.C., in the courtroom of federal judge Tanya Chutkin, where she set a trial date of March 4th for the case of United States of America versus Donald J. Trump. We do have a full transcript of that hearing this morning, and it ended with what will be the first words of defendant Donald Trump's appeal of the case if he is found guilty. After listening to Donald Trump's lawyer, John Loro, argue for a two-year delay, more two-and-a-half-year delay of the trial, and listening to prosecutor Molly Gaston with her boss, special prosecutor Jack Smith, looking on, Judge Chutkin said, I find that a trial beginning on March 4th, 2024, would give the defense adequate time to prepare for trial and ensure the public's interest in seeing this case resolved in a timely manner. I realize that Mr. Trump's criminal case in New York is scheduled for trial on March 25th. I did speak briefly with Judge Mershon to let him know that I was considering a date that might overlap with his trial. A trial start date of March 4th, 2024, gives Mr. Trump seven months between indictment and trial, which I believe is sufficient time to advise with counsel and prepare his defense. The trial will start three years, one month, and 27 days after the events of January 6th, 2021. After the judge said that, Donald Trump's criminal defense lawyer, John Loro, made a statement which contains the first point Donald Trump will raise if he is found guilty in this case and he appeals that verdict. The lawyer told the judge on behalf of President Trump, we will certainly abide by your honor's ruling as we must, but we will not be able to provide adequate representation to a client who has been charged with serious offenses as a result of that trial date. The trial date will deny President Trump the opportunity to have effective assistance of counsel in light of the enormity of this case. I feel I need to put that on the record so there's no doubt that in our judgment, that trial date is inconsistent with President Trump's right to due process and his right to effective assistance of counsel under the Sixth Amendment. And joining us now is Neil Katyal, former acting U.S. Solicitor General and professor at Georgetown Law School. He has argued 50 Supreme Court cases. He's an MSNBC legal analyst and host of the podcast Courtside with Neil Katyal. Neil, I wanted the country's foremost appeals practitioner to start us off tonight because when I saw, when I read that transcript, I saw right there uh, that John Loro was making, in effect, writing the first lines of the appeal if Donald Trump uh, is convicted in this case. Uh, what, how, what do you make of that as an appeal issue, the, the notion that they only had seven months to prepare for trial, so Donald Trump was denied adequate counsel? Yeah, it, it's certainly, Lawrence, an appeal issue. It's just not a very good one, ultimately. Um, as you mentioned, I used to run all of the federal government's appeals um, and defend prosecutions when I headed the Solicitor General's office. And, you know, these kinds of appeals are filed day in and day out, and they are routinely rejected every time. And, you know, there's a, I think here there's a very important principle, which is a need for a speedy trial because justice delayed is justice denied. And these kinds of tricks to try and delay things, you know, don't go over well, particularly when you're dealing with a very careful, well-respected judge like Judge Chutkin, who listened, you know, beyond all patience, in my mind, with uh, what, the, what the Trump lawyers were saying to delay the thing until 2026, which was just absurd. But she listened to it. She gave them a little bit of credence and gave them a few more months. But at the end, Lawrence, she said, you know, this show has to get on the road. And it reminded me of the George Floyd case in which I was special prosecutor. And uh, Officer Derek Chauvin made the same request for delaying the trial. Couldn't There were 30 gigabytes of data, didn't have enough time. His lawyers couldn't provide an effective defense. Defense, and we explained to the judge that this was an adequate amount of time, uh, and the judge rejected it, and that is not a strong appeal issue and never has been. And I think the same thing is true here. You know, as I've expressed before, I, I for one, have uh, real sympathies for the uh, 
Trump defense team argument that this is a massive amount of discovery material to process. And there was a point in the transcript where John Loro said, recalled the days, uh, the pre-digital days, when he said, you know, there might be 50 boxes of documents in the room and you, you'd sit down and you'd go through every one of them. That's the kind of discovery that I understand. I do not understand this computerized discovery with millions of pages and how the judge basically agreed with the prosecution, not as strongly, but agreed with the prosecution that really you don't have to sit down and go through every piece of paper and turn every page that way. Uh, there's a way of searching. Uh, but I, I have to say, I, I was impressed with the size of the burden that the defense counsel described. So, Lawrence, those of us in the 21st century, let alone the 20th, um, you know, we're used to this kind of discovery. There's all sorts of automated ways to do this. And so there are a lot of pages. That's because there's a lot of duplicates. And here, Jack Smith's team explained a lot of these pages are actually pages that are Donald Trump's pages. They've been in his possession for three years. They're not being turned over uh, for the first time. And, you know, the, the Trump lawyers made a whole bunch of kind of outrageous claims, like they said, the average length of a RICO prosecution or a conspiracy prosecution is really long, but they didn't tell the judge that their data was cooked, that basically it included all of the COVID era delays. Um, and so, you know, that's something Jack Smith pointed out. And basically, you know, it was a kind of devastating hearing, I think, for the Trump team because they basically kind of walked into this courtroom of a very well-respected federal judge. They tried to have like a my cousin Vinny moment and it totally failed failed on them. And, and that's why I do think to the extent they try this as an appeal issue, it's just not going to work. Um, you know, the judge was really careful today in what she did. Yeah, one of the things that's, that was funny in the transcript is one of the cases they cited as having a longer, that, that, where they suggested there was a longer discovery period was actually one of Judge Chutkin's own cases. So she knew it very well. She knew what was involved. She said there were plea negotiations involved that delayed it. There were a bunch of things involved, unrelated to discovery, uh, that delayed uh, the trial date there. So Donald Trump reacted to this today, uh, saying, among other things, today a biased Trump-hating judge gave me only a two-month extension, meaning two months longer than what the prosecution was asking for. Uh, how long will uh, Judge Chutkin allow Donald Trump to be, in effect, attempting to poison the jury pool by saying things like a biased Trump-hating judge? Yeah, I mean, that's the million-dollar question. I have to say my hat's off to Judge Chutkin for having such a thick skin and, and, um, and not doing anything so far. But at some point, you know, this is America's most important trial, certainly in our lifetimes, if not in the nation's history, it's certainly up there. And the idea that a criminal defendant can poison things this way, I think is really, really dangerous and destructive. And I think Trump is gambling on the fact that, that federal criminal trials are generally not televised. So he can go and bloviate and attack the judge right now, and he'll do so during the trial too. Um, and the American people won't see this federal criminal trial taking place against Donald Trump unless the Chief Justice and the Judicial Conference authorize cameras. And I think every time Donald Trump opens his mouth and attacks the judge, attacks this prosecution, I think that's just another exhibit for why this trial needs to be televised and every American can see it. Uh, that is uh, one of the points that uh, Molly Gaston, the special prosecutor from Jack Smith's office, said today. She said, because on, an, on a near daily basis, the defendant posts on social media about this case. He has publicly disparaged witnesses. He has attacked the integrity of the courts and of the citizens of the District of Columbia who make up our jury pool. And this potentially prejudices the jury pool. And then, of course, Donald Trump immediately goes and does again what she said he is doing. Uh, the judge said before the lawyers even spoke that uh, Donald Trump, by the way, is also complaining that this scheduled start is the day before uh, Super Tuesday and the presidential campaign primary schedule. The judge said, I want to note here that setting a trial date does not depend and should not depend on a defendant's personal and professional obligations. Mr. Trump, like any defendant, will have to make the trial date work 
regardless of his schedule. Uh, she compared scheduling this to uh, scheduling a criminal trial date for, say, a professional athlete. You cannot take uh, the professional athlete's schedule into consideration when you're doing that. That's exactly right, Lawrence. I mean, if Donald Trump doesn't want to have his trial start the day before Super Tuesday, the simple solution is don't commit crimes um, so that you're facing a criminal trial uh, the day before Super Tuesday. You don't get some special dispensation because you're Donald Trump. I know that's the way he's used to using, he's used to rolling, but I think justice is now catching up with him. And with respect to what the Jack Smith prosecutor, Molly Gaston, said today about Trump's, you know, intimidation of witnesses or poisoning the jury pool or the attacks on the judges. This is a slam dunk uh, appeal argument for the for the federal government, for Jack Smith. When Donald Trump, as you say he will, tries to appeal his criminal conviction on the grounds that he didn't have enough time to prepare, the government will start its brief by saying, this schedule is entirely of your own making. You're the one who shot off your mouth and tried to poison the process, and that is what the judge warned you. She said, if you do that, I'm going to move the trial date up. And it wouldn't shock me if the judge moved it up even further in response to Trump's, if, if Trump keeps opening his mouth in this way. Uh, Donald Trump also said, I will appeal, meaning I will appeal the trial date, uh, which I've never seen that before. Well, good luck with that. I have seen it. Um, I've never seen it successful. Um, and that is because the standard is a standard called mandamus. It's the highest standard in the federal courts for an appeal. And, you know, we could walk in when I was in the federal government, you know, blind, blindfolded with our hands tied behind our back and win those mandamus appeals. And certainly in this circuit, the D.C. circuit, our nation's second highest court, um, there is no chance that this is going to be a viable appeal. So good luck with that, Mr. Trump. Um, your trial date is March 4th, 2024. We'll all be watching.